Hey, thank you for attending my session on deep multigraph clustering by the Enterprise Graph Association. This is one of the many decoding research series videos that I'm doing. Now, before I kind of get into the research paper, I'd like to take a minute and talk about uh, where can we use this. Uh, multigraph clustering and cross graph association, uh, you know, generally be applicable to most multigraph use cases, knowledge graph, social graph, neurobiological graphs, etc. Uh, now, if you've been following the Gardner cycle uh, in the last five, you've seen knowledge graph kind of move very rapidly from innovation trigger to peak inflated expectation. This is what we have since 2021. Uh, some of the knowledge graph use cases that we're seeing is uh, enterprise data governance, research and knowledge discovery, risk, uh, risk exposure, and uh, thematic investing. Now, about this research paper, uh, Deep Multigraph Clustering by Tentive Cross Graph Association paper tries to solve multigraph clustering using uh, minimum entropy, entropy based clustering, uh, especially on you know, Cauchy distribution to identify if a node X belongs to a cluster. And uh, you know, the cross graph association really kind of ends up using attention based methods, modal association between the cluster uh, of different graph. Now, uh, we've kind of you know, gone ahead and taken this paper and implemented the code and you know, really used in one of our products. Uh, now, if you want more details on this research paper, uh, you know, specific around the code implementation and the performance metrics, reach out to me at acesalanki77 at gmail.com. Uh, with that being said, over to the session and thank you. Hey, thanks for attending another session by Decoding Research. Uh, Decoding Research uh, is a set of uh, videos which typically talks about papers and uh, uh, primary research papers around AI and machine learning. Uh, in today's session, we're going to be talking about the multigraph clustering by attentive cross graph association. Now, uh, this is a research paper which came out in Jana 2020. As the name suggests, it, it kind of talks about uh, multigraph clustering and its heavily indexes on attention based mechanism and Cauchy distribution. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, now, we've used this uh, research uh, uh, you know, uh, paper in one of our products and we've kind of evolved it to a point where uh, we find this uh, research findings very useful. Uh, quickly getting into the session, we've seen a lot of the data which is in and around us uh, in the building some form. Uh, some of it could be graph, some of it could be non-graph. Now graph-based data typically into the social media network analysis, biology and computer vision. Uh, now the fundamental problem when it comes to graph-based data is not the cluster. Is clustering once the data in the graph is being clustered, then it can be used for various decision making process. Now, we've also seen there's a lot of data growth which has actually happened in the last decade or so, and resulting in a lot of large volume and intergraph uh, based data, interdependent based graph data, also that's what we call multi graph. Now, what we've seen is the traditional methods of today are more suited for a single graph, typically spectral clustering, more dynamic clustering, and stochastic block block model. Now, when it really comes to clustering uh, uh, in a multigraph, uh, the complexities are very many. Uh, one of which comes to my mind is obviously each graph has a different dimensionality in terms of embedding and then trying to basically compare uh, different dimensionality data obviously is a nightmare. Uh, now, this session primarily kind of talks a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, the multigraph clustering technique and uh, primarily using attention as a mechanism. Now, obviously, uh, clustering in graph and identifying cross graph relationship, uh, you know, a wealth of information, it can help you make a lot more better decision. Now, the problem statement, now why has multigraph really been a challenge so far? Obviously, the graph data is uh, complex, non-linear, underlying, uh, underlying structures, uh, non-linearity of the data needs to be considered while, you know, clustering. Uh, the modeling non-linear representation has been a problem so far. Now, obviously, between Jan 2020 and now there are some more papers which actually came out around which by way talks about uh, multigraph clustering, different techniques are there which I'm not going to be covering as a part of this session. Uh, now, uh, basically inter interdependent graphs will be different topology, really sparse versus dense. And although intergraphs links are available at a node level, but how to directly infer the hidden cluster association and use them for reinforcing the clustering accuracy. Now, what are we really trying to solve with this paper? So DMGC uh, or deep multigraph clustering based uh, uh, is based on a deep learning model and your attention based mechanism. Well. That's what we tell you. We've all kind of repeated all this three or four times. Now, what does it really do? It proposes a deep learning method, 
to simultaneous gain for clusters I would probably in the cluster association it's implement. Uh, if a node X in the graph belongs to a specific cluster and if a specific cluster A has association with cluster B and it's using some deep learning technique. Uh, now, how is it done? Typically, it starts off the whole process in terms of taking the non-linear data and pushing it through an auto-encoding architecture uh, to kind of arrive the data space or slash embedding. At the same time, preserving the first and second order proximity between the nodes, that's typically the uh, the structure or uh, around the either node from a neighborhood standpoint to be continues to remain there. Because we obviously need that going down the line, right? What's having you know, pushed it into a latent space uh, where the embeddings are available. The next thing is to kind of go ahead and form the cluster. So you arrive at a cluster site with probability for all nodes. And this is where the Cauchy distribution really plays a major role and we kind of uh, play around with the minimum entropy uh, that helps do the job. Once having done uh, all that bit of pieces, the next thing is obviously in terms of, uh, okay, now you kind of got your nodes and points which are assigned to a specific cluster. Now the next thing is that you need to obviously find out what's a cross graph uh, association. So while we do that, uh, you know, uh, the third part of the uh, problem is to kind of go and assign a cross graph cluster association using a tension based mechanism. Uh, let's go under the hoods in terms of what's really happening because this is where we're going to talk about the paper, the workings, the mathematics, and we'll also leave the last part in terms of the actual code base. Uh, before we kind of get into, uh, you know, the paper, there's some key concepts which are important from a paper understanding point of view. Uh, so the two two concepts which have been used in the paper pretty heavily. One is the minimum entropy based clustering. Now entropy as you understand is the randomness of information process. We've seen the entropy and the information gain in terms of decision trees and it's the same thing out here. In simpler words, higher entropy or randomness means difficult to predict. So when it comes to clustering in relation to class labels, a ground truth or lower entropy implies better clustering. Cauchy distribution, interesting, that's been around for a very long time. Basically, it's uh, uh, it's basically another, uh, it's called the Lorentz distribution, and it's from the family of continuous distribution property. Yeah, but then there's a difference that it kind of resembles a normal distribution curve, but there's a difference. The difference really comes in the part that, you know, uh, it has a taller peak than normal, and it has a fat tail of decay, uh, which is where uh, a lot of the uh, the findings will come in terms of me using the fact tails for a lot of different purposes. So uh, it's a fact tail decay much slowly from the earlier by uh, the paper we tried to solve two things. One is a cluster assignment probability. Uh, I think it actually means that for node X in GFI uh, to belong to a cluster K, uh, there has to be a cluster assignment probability Q of I X and Q X measuring the probability of the node that X belongs to K. Once we've kind of done the uh, cluster assignment probability, uh, the next we try to arrive at a cluster association property saying that uh, cluster K in G of I is associated with cluster L in GJ and with CK IJ uh, with CK L measuring the property of cluster K. Now having kind of been very clear on the inputs and what we try to get to an output point of view, now let's try to kind of go into the uh, certain assumptions, certain uh, the, the workings. Now uh, before we get into workings, we are assuming some things. One, is obviously we kind of put the graph through, uh, it's been transformed, it's kind of gone through the auto encoder and you know, we, it's been transformed uh, into this gradient and embedding. That means uh, each node X in graph G of I uh, has actually uh, been converted to its latent embedding. Here, the latent embedding, what we're talking is H of I of X, which is essentially uh, uh, a d dimensional vector. And uh, one thing we need to kind of note is that uh, the the di is the dimension of your getting space of gi now this is different for different dies uh in addition to the cluster in gi we also have a uh, we associate here as a centroid vector for the cluster we call it uki uh, now assuming that we have these things now obviously uh, you know later we kind of discuss an approach how to learn uki by an attention based projection but i'm going to leave that for later now let's kind of focus more on the minimum, uh, you know, on how to basically figure out if uh, the node X belongs to the cluster X, which is uh, more of a cluster assignment probability. Now, uh, so basically we, the whole idea of what we're trying to solve out here is that we try to measure the similarity between H of I 
uh, X and the Tate, uh, the Tate cluster or centroid, what uh, we call as nuke. Now, for this, we employ the Cauchy distribution of the kernel function. Now, uh, as discussed earlier, comparing Cauchy, you know, Cauchy and kernel, a model based uh, uh, on Cauchy is more effective to force uh, H of X apart from the centroid uh, UK if X does not belong to cluster K, which actually employs, uh, implies a very large boundary. So then we go ahead and define a score K uh, I of X uh, to indicate that uh, uh, the probability that the node X belongs to cluster K. Now the formula of this is actually coming from, uh, from the Cauchy distribution. Uh, the ID, uh, this is a uneven distribution, so you can see that Q of X of I can actually run from Q I all the way to Q X, Q, uh, except for Q X K I. And this is highly desirable, and it's uh, basically, uh, you know that, uh, you know, obviously the, the number of points, um, you know, many that means the randomness in the distribution is high. So one Obviously, this will be basically the, you know, we want to reduce the randomness in the distribution. The one way to reduce the randomness uh, in the distribution uh, is to minimize the entropy on uh, uh, Q X of I. Now, if I really look at the entropy formula, uh, summation of I 1 to N P I log uh, log P I, uh, I, I think we kind of end up using the same formula for uh, trying to uh, determine the entropy for uh, Q X of I. And uh, so, kind of having out worked out the entropy formula, if you really take a good look at the entropy formula, it's in the form of x log x, which is uh, nothing but the convex uh, non positive for uh, zero, uh, for x greater than zero less than one. And we have an equation uh, which is kind of given out here uh, in the form of x, q, x, i, and so and so on. Now, if you really look at this equation, uh, if this equation, the equality really has to hold out, then q, x, uh, which is a one out vector, q, i of x, k has to be equal to one, indicating. So this kind of indicates that it belongs to cluster q with a probability of one. So this becomes our starting equation from cluster assignment probability. But apparently, story doesn't end up there. So now, you obviously, you have an equation to work with, but then minimizing of the entropy uh, will result into a gradient exploding problem uh, during the training of the gradient descent. So, uh, essentially, uh, basically, it, it kind of gets to a point where, uh, where you know, where, sorry, where QIX K tends to zero, the wall gradient tends to be very, very, uh, very large, and which will dominate the gradient of the final loss and result in unstable results. Now, uh, now, one way to solve the problem would be to go ahead and involve, uh, you know, introduce an inner product loss. And uh, once you introduce the inner product loss, you're probably going to get an equation of this sort. And where sig sigma is nothing but a sigmoid function. And so this becomes your final equation for uh, cluster assignment probability. Now, once you've kind of gone ahead and gone ahead and complete iteration of the number of, uh, you know, uh, nodes, uh, and assign them specific clusters. Uh, we have, uh, so each cluster has enough number of uh, nodes to kind of go and, and arrive at something what we call a soft frequency, which is nothing but an empty to distribution uh, of the cluster. And uh, let's say we, you know, the, uh, we have a soft uh, frequency, so it will be good to kind of, you know, apply KL diversions uh, over the soft frequency and, and mu K, uh, you know, so, and then eventually that's what we, we hit, go ahead and add it to the cluster loss and that's, uh, this is what the final equation really looks like from a loss stack point of view. Now, uh, the next part is dealing uh, with a lot of proximity constraints. Um, not going to talk too much about the proximity constraints. Uh, so typically, uh, you know, when you look at a specific graph, you, each and every node is going to have neighbor nodes, uh, first order, second order. And there's a, there's a likely chance uh, where if uh, a node is connected to a set of neighbors, those neighbors would eventually be a part of the same cluster as well. So uh, we kind of gone ahead and derived two more equation for basically the, uh, the first uh, order proximity and similarly for the second order proximity. Uh, I'm not going to talk much to it. Uh, at the end, there is uh, a link to the paper and there's a link to my blog which talks more on these uh, approximately the same. 
Uh, having said this, now let's move on to the next part where we talk about the cross, uh, cross graph association. Now, cross graph association is a third piece. So you, we kind of reached the point where uh, we've gone ahead and uh, you know assigned the you know the the, the nodes to various clusters. Uh, now, obviously, we need to kind of look at uh, the way the different clusters and see if there's an association between them. So, in this section, uh, what we're going to talk a little bit more about. Uh, so, what we've developed uh, is essentially an attention-based method to the model. Uh, which you know, which associates uh, clusters between different graphs. So now, obviously, we talked about uh, cluster U K four, cluster K in G of I. And now, so step three is modern on cross graph association property, which is essentially a detention based method. Earlier on in the session, we talked about the KFI being assumed. Now it's time we go ahead and define that. Now, to preserve the autonomy of the division graph, new KFI are defined in different embedding spaces for different GIs and which have different dimensional DI. Uh, this turns out to be a problem when it comes to, kind of when it comes to comparison between centroids at different graph points to the different dimensionality. Now, to solve this problem, uh, we go ahead and define a unified space. This is a unified space for all cluster centroids of all graphs, such that each centroid is represented by a vector zk, uh, which happens to be uh, for uniform dimensionality b. And hence, uh, since they have the same dimensionality b, then operations such as comparison becomes a lot more easier across uh, the two centroids of multiple centroids. Now the question comes in terms of how do we really arrive at u k of i? So. If you really look at the, this diagram closely, uh, let's ha let's say we have Z1, which happens to be uh, the you know the centroid defined in the unified unified space uh, for cluster one. Okay, and it so turns out uh, mu of one, mu one one, is essentially a projection of Z11. So, in order to generate mu qfi in the embedding space, what we do is we perform projection from the unified space to the embedding space by, you know, for uh, of each graph by attention based uh, single layer fully connected network. So, if you really look at Z1, it's kind of connected with, uh, you know, C11, C1121, and so on with multiple other, you know, multiple other, uh, you know, uh, uh, weights. Now, uh, essentially, uh, this basically CK, uh, CKL IJ's attention weight measuring, you know, the association between a cluster centroid K in GI to cluster centroid L in GJ. And uh, such that if you really look at this thing closely, so mu K of I essentially turns out to be, um, you know, an attention based equation over concatenation of all the centroids, okay, multiplied by ZKs, uh, that eventually multiply by ZK of I, and the WI, which happens to be the weight of uh, the single layer FC, and uh, overall we perform a ReLU operation on top, and that's how we kind of arrive at UK of I. So, I think. Now we kind of got to a point where we kind of define UK of I. So moving on further, uh, this is what we kind of talked in the previous slide, concatenating of all the centroids for all graphs over G of I, the attention together with ZK, the output UK can capture all the cross dependency at a cluster level. Now that uh, this is where the things can start getting interesting, now the attention with CK of L, uh, that is the tension weight measuring the association between cluster centroid of K in GI and cluster centroid L in GJ. It turns out we again start using the Cauchy distribution as a kernel to measure, measure the association. Now, tension weights are directional by nature. So, for example, C1112 and C1121 exist between cluster 1 and 2. Uh, furthermore, uh, now that we kind of have, uh, you know, the associations between cluster, Defined. Now we 
kind of get to a point we would want to kind of regularize uh, you know the findings so far that we had. So recalling the cluster assignment distribution of NodeX, uh, of Graph, GIS, QX. Now, intuitively, if X is strongly linked to Node Y in GOJ, then the cluster of X and cluster of Y are linked, uh, likely to be associated. So that is CKL, IJ is large. And the two clusters are denoted by KLN and KLN. Now, CKIJ is basically essentially an attention metric, so scale entry is C CKLIJ. And then this intuition applies that two vectors, QI and QI, CIJ transpose are similar by similar and sort of metrics. Now, generalizing to the relationship in the case where X linked to multiple nodes, um, now let NX I to J be set of nodes where uh, J, you know, nodes in J, G, G, J, which are linked to GI. Now, to penalize this uh, inconsistency in the assignments, uh, following loss function is proposed. So basically, it's Qx of i and Qx uh, where i tends to j uh, squared, and uh, such that uh, Qx um, i tends to j uh, is kind of given by uh, this equation. And S of x uh, is a weight for intergraph link dependencies in x of gi and y of gi. Uh, your Q of X I you know specified transfer cluster probability of node of X uh, through node of Y that belongs to N of X uh, uh, I of J. Furthermore, uh, you know let S of I J be a matrix with X I the entry in S of X uh, I J performing a row normalization on uh, to obtain S of I J. So summing up over all the nodes in the graph, the loss function looks something of this nature. So I, I won't kind of dig too deep into the cross graph visualization again. You can refer to the paper, which kind of talks to more of the detail, but I was kind of more interested in terms of just highlighting the L cross loss, uh, you know, from a cross graph visualization standpoint, you know. Now, moving on further, uh, obviously we need to kind of get to a point of integrating the clustering loss, uh, losses, the proximity losses, the cross, graph regularizer to be the final objective function because that's you know that's the at the end of the day we you know the find the, the loss function has to be applied altogether. Uh, so basically so it's it's made of theta, Z and W well uh, L C alpha L proximity and beta L cross alpha beta are hyperparameters for trade off between losses. Theta uh, turns out to be theta one to theta two uh, g are the outputs from the auto indicator stand, uh, auto encoder standpoint of view. Z is a, uh, are the cluster centroids. W is the weight for the parameter uh, for retention based centroids. Uh, furthermore, the algorithm um, you know this is the algorithm from a deep uh, you know multi graph clustering DNCG style. So we input we we talk about the GNCG matrix number of clusters cross graph relationship if it exists. Alpha and beta. The output is cluster assignments, cluster associations, and we initialize, uh, you know, theta W cluster centroids and Z, and, and we kind of go ahead by not convergence too. We compute compute QI. That's the first step. You know, if you kind of go back to step one, we compute Z I Z I of J, um, and then compute the loss, and then we update these parameters uh, using Adam, and then kind of return, uh, you know, uh, QI, uh, basically, which is nothing but the cluster assignment with cluster association. Uh, furthermore, uh, you know, let's get into the code. So we talked about step zero, you know, that's where the inputs, uh, which kind of talked in the previous slide. Step one is to feed the graph data to auto encoding components, which are the node, node and building, while well, preserve the proximity between the nodes, and this is what we call the representation learning. Step two is more around Deriving the similarity property for each node, uh, embedding the graph clusters in which kind of decide if the node belongs to the cluster. This is where the Cauchy distribution comes in. So basically, it's a node assignment here. Yeah. Step three is a cluster association probability with respect to other clusters of the cross graph linkages. Now, this is where the attention mechanism comes together. Now, considering this is a deep learning method uh, model, it has to be trained with a joint loss function, which we kind of talk to right at the end. Uh, in the cluster and the attention weight, that's the regulation should be. Now that being said, this is the GitHub code link, uh, which you can find the, the working code for this. Uh, that's it now. Thank you very much for comments and suggestion. Reach out to me at asvanki77 at gmail.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.